Hey everyone, this is Nikki and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to be doing a question and answer for the very first time here in my YouTube. If you're wondering what's with a weird angle and obviously I have a setup now I brought a table here in front of my cabinet so that I can use them as background and then I am going to do some plant chores but we're not basically going to be paying attention to them it's just that there's always something that I have to do when it comes to plants like yesterday I propagated obviously I chopped them and I was supposed to film that, but I realized that all I do is chop. <laughs> Honestly, all I do is chop. And I don't think you guys want to see that anymore or let me know if you do. But yeah, so I just chopped a lot of Hoyas yesterday. They're all of them and I left them to callus overnight. And now we're going to propagate them in water so while I answer the questions that you guys sent me over Instagram I'm going to do just that I did receive a few questions and some are very plant related well some are personal which I did not expect uh, when I posted the question thing on my stories on Instagram I thought that people would basically ask questions about plants obviously but I think it's because I haven't really shared a lot of like personal things the most personal thing that i've shared is probably my son <laughs> it's because i like posting him whenever he does something with my plants that's it but aside from that i don't think people knows anything about me one thing that i forgot to do though is to ask those people who sent me questions if it's okay for me to like share their instagram handle i do have a thing about um privacy for this um particular video i'm going to be answering the questions that you guys sent me including the personal ones just so that we could get to know each other okay so let me start my setup first so obviously i did some mass propagation and i want to prop them in water for now, I'm trying to work on a different approach when it comes to my propagation. So let's see how that's going to work. Our first question is, um, what is your most favorite plant? <laughs> um, well, that's a hard one. I mean, it's because I think I love my plants equally and um, a lot of times I change my mind about which is my most favorite, I would say. So I know, I mean, like for example, if I was asked this question, let's say a month ago, I would definitely say that my number one is allocation. <laughs> but then something happened just last week almost two weeks ago when i went for a short vacation staycation with my family because it's my it was my son's birthday a lot of my allocations got sad and some of them are currently in recovery and some of them just died officially so because of that i kind of hate allocations right now and they're definitely not my number one not even my number two not my number three <laughs> i would say my number one right now if it isn't obvious, um, it should be Hoyas. Hoyas. They're the easiest for me and I just love being able to grow them because most of my Hoyas, um, the ones that I acquire, they're either unrooted or they could be rooted but just one node and no new growth. And it's kind of a challenge to make sure they would grow in my environment. Because at the same time, there's a lot of risk when it comes to growing Hoyas. But luckily, I, I think I would be able to say that I'm okay with them now. <laughs> so next question is, 
Oh wow. So the questions are not arranged and I didn't sort them to like plant related and then personal. So this is going to be, I'm just answering them as like how they were arranged on my Instagram sticker. Okay, so the next question is, does your husband question your massive plant collection? <laughs> okay, so first things first, he can't. He's not allowed. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So um, let's say, um, I think when it comes to family and or let's say a partnership, um, First pack is obviously uh, a, a priority, right? So I respect our space, our place. And because of that, despite this hobby of having a lot of plants and everything, I made sure to maintain my space very clean. Not just the area for plants, not just this thing that you're seeing right now. I know a lot of people have been telling me how neat my setup is and I don't know, it's just because, how do I say this? Like, I'm a neat person? <laughs> but yeah, um, I like cleaning and aside from the plant area, the entire place is always clean. I make sure about that. There are days that it's messy, obviously, but I make sure to clean as much as I could. In the plant room, I know it could get chaotic in there a lot of times because I also do the packing in there. I do the sorting, everything. So it gets really messy almost every week. There's a day, I would say Monday to Wednesday, it's always messy, but then I always make sure to clean up by Thursday, Friday, so that, you know, the next few days it's going to be clean. <laughs> and also I work in there, my computer is in there, so I need to have a very clean surroundings, otherwise my brain wouldn't function. <laughs> and as so of, let's say, um, finances or like expenses with the plans that I purchase, like I know I can get crazy sometimes, um, it's already known. <laughs> So my husband never really asked about it because in the first place, I'm spending my own money. I never asked him for anything. I never asked him to buy me anything that's plant related. The only thing that I ask him to do for me is to pick up, <laughs> pick up some things that I purchased, um, especially around Toronto. Um, if he could pick up, he would do that. Um, same as supplies or whatever. But other than that, I don't really ask him. So like, I'm saying this because based from my other plant friends, those two are the most common things that their partners nag them about. Number one is the space because of the plants. Um, it gets messy or like um, it takes so much space. So that's not really a problem because I maintain our space. As you guys know already, I maintain my plants very small because I'm aware of what my space could handle right and then as for the budget yeah i never ask him for money to buy plans because i'm earning my own money so yeah we don't really have a problem and if anything he's very supportive because he knows how these plans make me so happy and at the same time right now it's basically my business so yeah, he's very supportive. As a matter of fact, he even wants me to get a new cabinet just because he noticed that my other plants are getting big. He wants me to make a, a Mills bow cabinet just for anthuriums. And who knows, I might do that. <laughs> wow, I, I haven't done anything. <laughs> oh my God, this is so bad. Like I can't talk and prop. I'm just propagating in water, so. I just have some tubes. Yeah, right, I'll just show you guys what I do. I put the entire thing, but the water should be just below the stem or the leaves. So that's what I do. I just make sure to put them all inside just to make sure they're secured. Yeah. These are flower tubes, if you guys know them. And then I also got some um, tube holders. If you guys get a blood test, you would notice that this is where they put the tubes <laughs> for the blood that they collect. But yeah, <laughs> gonna make things work. I chopped my Lee prism so much yesterday. Like crazy. I did. There. I'm obviously going to chop this some more.
Okay, for the time being, I can combine like three of them in just one tube. I know you guys will probably think that this is so cramped, but part of my uh, routine is that after two weeks, I'll remove them from here because that's when I'm going to pot them in a medium, most probably perlite. So that's still fine. I'm so bad at this, like multitasking. Okay, so next is, oh, this is a perfect question. The exact question is, um, what is your favorite propping media? So just in time where I mentioned propping in water and moving it, um, my favorite right now is going to be the Psycho Prop Mix um, that I have at the Prop Studio. It's basically a mix of perlite and vermiculite. And for those who doesn't know, well, basically vermiculite is a very water retentive uh, substrate and then perlite is good for aeration. So putting the two of them together gives the perfect balance that a propagation needs. My process right now is that I leave my chops in water for let's say a good week or two. And then once I see the tiny roots starting, that's when I move them to the psycho prop mix. But that's just for experiment. I had huge success already in just propping them straight there. And I've done that for like the past couple of batch of propagations. If you purchase a plant from me, you would notice that it's in that mix. But this time I'm just doing something, a different kind of approach. And it's mostly because of my space. <laughs> it's mostly because of my space. Um, I have so many chops in here as you can see and I believe that if I do this I will save space. I hope I'm right about it. I have so many leaf prism. Oh my god. I think there's about three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten already, and I have more in here. Well, my mother plant is insane. So, no wonder why. Okay, so let's do this first, and I'm going to... I'm going to keep some longer vines, just because I know that there are other people who probably wants that. Okay, so the next question is, what do you do for work? I don't know if I mentioned that already. I probably did, but maybe very vague. Um, so technically, if you ask me, I would say that I'm an IT. It's easier to understand a few years ago, because once you say you're IT, that's it. You work in front of the computer. But these days, you have to be very specific, and it's kind of tricky for people who manage to learn more things um, in the field. Because for myself, um, basically, I am a web developer, I am a programmer, I am a multimedia designer, and I am an AA engineer. And that's just so much to take in for people. But for those who are in the tech industry, I'm sure you understand that we multitask. It's odd though because I can't multitask right now. Like doing plant chores and then reading the questions and answering. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, yeah. So um, I do several things. And by the end of the day, they're all under tech. And the thing is, um, the reason for that is mostly because I, I don't work exclusively for one company. I, I don't want that. So um, I basically work as a contractor. And I would say a lot of the companies that I uh, work with, you guys are using it. You guys know them. You guys check them out every day. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'm also a game designer. So again, it's also in tech. And as a game designer, I think the best explanation for this is a random game, you have an avatar, right? So I design avatars for games. And then I also design clothes, weapons, objects, and even the surroundings or environment in a game scene. So those are the things that I design. 
and I really love them. I enjoy doing this 3D animations and stuff like that, but it takes so much time. But the thing is, because I wanted to promote the things that I design, the things that I make um, on this few games that I work with, I basically create content as well, like promoting the clothes that I designed, promoting the environment that I made, and showing other players of the particular game how it's used or how it's done, the, the secret things about it, what's so special about it, that's what I do. It was just a hobby when it started, like I just wanted to see how my work looks like in the perspective of a, a user of the app or a gamer. So. I started doing that and then I started making content and then eventually some of these companies, um, some of the games basically contact me, they reach out to me and they ask me to help them, um, help them find more creators like me to their platforms, to their apps and maybe teach them to do what I do. So that being said, I was given the title of a creator program manager. So basically I manage creators and I teach them the business side of doing this, like gaming and stuff. And there's a lot of business behind it. Um, you can work with several brands just for being a content creator for games. And yeah, that's what I'm trying to teach them. And then basically on top of all of those tech things, um, like I said, I'm just a freelancer. I only work by project or by contract, mostly because I do run several businesses, mostly online, small businesses. One of them is the Prop Studio. Obviously, you guys know about that already. And I'm really grateful for all of your support. And another one is, um, I do have this online shop called The Artelier. That's where I offer the things that I handcraft or basically mostly arts and crafty things like house decors, accessories, and some crystals, some collectibles. Um, like for this one example, um, these are bracelets made from gemstones and pearls all from the Philippines and I offer them on that website. I made this. I usually do this when um, my son's asleep and I'm trying to relax and I just wanna, I don't know, that's how I function. Like if I wanna relax, I, I still wanna be doing something. And a lot of times it's this, art related things. Another online shop is the Creator Collective. Um, it's this shirt. I think you guys have seen this um, worn by my friends. Um, David has it, Kitty has it, Kiana, Emma, um, Kevin, who can look at that has it. Um, and if anything, he deserves it. <laughs> so Creator Collective, I already mentioned the Creator Program Manager thing, right? And that means I've been working with different kinds of creators, influencers and vloggers, whatever they call themselves. And a lot of times, aside from just managing them and keeping them going, make, making sure they work and they create content for the brands. I also kind of like, you know, became their online mom <laughs> where um, sometimes you would hear that they're having some troubles coming up with ideas and we call that art block and then some of them are just very busy and you know um trying to balance things and they they're still learning a lot of them are younger they are kids i i work with people as young as um 12 years old and most of the time also i talk with their parents and because we have this parent consent thing and yeah so it's really um, eye-opening to be working with different kind of content creators and I get to learn what things they need or what things bother them. So randomly, I just decided that I'm going to create a brand, a merch, that's going to be a motivation for creators like myself. I'm a creator. So Creator Collective, I have designs uh, that have statements and like they're mostly positive um, lines 
for creators. Like for example, this design has um, born to create. So the idea is because all of us are creators. Like for example, um, you don't necessarily have to be a content creator to be a creator because these days that what that's what we call them creators, right? But like. If you're a DJ, if you're a musician, if you play any musical instrument or you write songs, you create music. So you're a creator. If you're someone who, let's say, work in hospitality, like even if you're front of the house, just basically talking to people, um, hosting them to their chairs and tables, whatever. If you're a chef cooking in the kitchen, you're basically creating an experience for people. So that means you're a creator. So all of us are creators. It's just a matter of trying to figure out what we want to create and what we want to share to the world. But by the end of the day, you're a creator. So that's why I named my brand Creator Collective. But it's been kind of like not my priority because of the many things that I've been doing. It's not really, it hasn't really took off. I know I'm not proud of it, but it is what it is. <laughs> I also have another shop, um, it's called Mom and Moon. Um, it's mostly merch for moms. <laughs> Any um, statement shirts or tote bags or whatever, um, it's for moms. But generally, I, I basically have many others and it's mostly drop shipping and print on demand. So if you guys have heard of that. This is not the channel for it, but I do that a lot. <laughs> I like having multiple streams of income, so that's what I do. That's what I do. I just realized that it's what I do. <laughs> so yeah, as you can tell, I do a lot of things for work. It's hard to ask me what's my job because I have a lot of jobs. <laughs> okay, the next question is... Ooh. Next question is, who is your favorite plant YouTuber? So I'll be honest, I don't really watch a lot of people um, in the plant community here on YouTube because I, in YouTube, I watch something different, mostly tech. <laughs> mostly tech and games, but I always, always, always make sure to watch Kevin Hakunula Planta and it started way back in pandemic and for those who doesn't know i moved here in canada during the pandemic so i arrived here like second week or second week of february i think and then just two weeks after my arrival lockdown happened and i don't have any friends i don't have any relatives the only person that i know in here was my husband <laughs> And obviously, uh, and his sister, few relatives, but basically I don't have any friends. I don't have direct relatives of my own. And I do have some friends, online friends, old classmates, but they are in other parts of Canada. So that doesn't really work. At the time we were living in um, Niagara, if you guys know St. Catharines. So it's kind of a very, sorry boring area for me <laughs> i mean at least for me because i came from the city where i lived um in my country so living in a place like niagara was kind of a huge change for me and it doesn't help that it was pandemic everything's closed honestly everything's so depressing and i remember pretty much that when i saw my husband's apartment because obviously he was the one who chose that and decorated no there's no decoration <laughs> so when i saw our place um i was like i wanted to add plants in here because obviously as someone who came from the philippines and you guys already know my mom has a jungle i grew up in the jungle <laughs> uh, i was like i want to add plants in here but I don't know where to buy plants because, again, I was new to Canada and I haven't really gone around that much just yet. And I tried searching for plants online and I was mind blown 
mind blown with the prices. Not only because I think um, obviously during the pandemic, everything was expensive and particularly with the plants, um, it's been a hype. It's been a, a, a new hobby for a lot of people. So a lot of the sellers have taken advantage of that. And obviously I think it's because also it's hard to import at the time. So prices of the plants have gone up so much. Like it's insane. It's insane. And it was quite unacceptable for me. Um, for those, I don't know for everyone, but for those who migrated or basically, you know, if you're in a different country, do you know how you always convert things to your own currency? So everything that I've seen in Canadian dollars, I try to convert them into Philippine peso, which is insane, which is insane. And I wasn't happy with the prices. So i didn't buy any plants just yet back then but i was living vicariously through kevin's youtube channel and because of that i also learned so many things i enjoyed watching kevin because at the same time um i learned that obviously our surroundings here in canada the environment is very different from the tropical countries and philippines is one I learned a lot from Kevin and I really just enjoyed, you know, for sure if you're watching Kevin, you would know what I'm talking about, but Kevin is just so fun to watch. Never have I thought the day would come where I would be getting my own plants. And I never thought the day would come that I would be buying expensive plants. <laughs> and I never thought the day would come that I would become a seller myself. And you know what's crazy? I never thought that I would meet Kevin. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of like interesting how things turn. I'm a fan of Kevin. I'm always going to be a fan. Kevin's one of the best people I've met in the plant community. Very genuine, very fun. So the next question is, what is your favorite Filipino food? <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys, the questions are very random. Um, so, wait, is this just one food you want me to, like, share? Hold on a second. I get it now. Most of the people who send questions are fellow Filipinos here in Canada and in U.S., so... <laughs> ha! Huh, okay. Favorite Filipino food. So, I do have a lot of favorite Filipino food. For the record, that's why I married a chef. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Filipino food is great. I love them. But if you're going to make me choose just one, I would say um, uh, kare kare. So for those who aren't Filipinos, and for those who doesn't know that, it's a peanut based. Um, it's like beef stew, I would say. Um, but it's it has a peanut based sauce and we often um, partner it with shrimp paste. It's really good. I love it. That's gonna be my top one for now. And thanks for reminding me. I think I'm going to ask my husband to make some this week. <laughs> he should be able to do that. Can't say no to wifey. Okay, so... I think um, there's only a few questions left because the other questions are sent multiple times. Just like the one um, who asked what propping media is my favorite. And I think that's a top question because you guys know how much I love propagating. Um, that was sent like by five people, if I'm correct, but yeah. Anyways, um, some questions were sent multiple times, so yeah. Okay, so the next question is, why did you move to Canada? 
or maybe um it's probably a question why i've chosen canada i don't know i'm not sure um okay so the thing is i did not <laughs> i did not choose canada but my husband was already here when we started dating should i share the story maybe i should okay i met my husband back in high school and i was just 15 back then and he was 16 i think but we weren't dating back then um uh we're kids basically we were just schoolmates and then of course obviously at the time we didn't have anything to do with each other but we were Facebook friends ever since. Um, I think that's a thing. You add everyone in your um, school. I think that's a thing. So yeah, through the next few years of our lives, college and then the time we started working, we were just friends online. But um, we were both in the food business industry. So... Um, I saw him post something about a new location of his food business and I was so curious because I'm interested to put my food business in there and this food business was with an ex of mine <laughs> um, and I messaged him. I asked him um, about the location and stuff, mostly information about that and then since then we kind of re reconnected but there was nothing we were just friends we never seen each other um he even invited me to his um it's called despedida it's when a person leaves for a different country or different place so he invited me for his last day in the philippines just to check out his business but i didn't go because i have some other um commitments but yeah so we've been just friends really but then we started talking more online and then just like that we started dating online so even though it's online it doesn't mean i haven't met him okay we've known each other for so long already <laughs> i can't believe i'm sharing this so yeah <laughs> and then um after two years of online dating, like not seeing each other, just online, um, he decided to visit the Philippines. So it was two years already. And when he arrived the first day, I mean, a few hours later, because he arrived midnight. And then the next day, he proposed to me, just like that. First day, of being with me meeting me again because you know i think i was 24 when we got married basically um wait it, it's been four years five years yeah i think and yeah so basically it's been a few years since you've last seen me and now you're asking me to marry you so that was quite insane for the both of us <laughs> it was insane but you know what's crazier I said yes <laughs> and then yeah the rest is history no not really after that he went back here because um, I couldn't come with him just yet and I have to finish a lot of things back home I closed down all of my businesses then a few months after processing my papers, I was able to move here and honestly, it, it didn't even register to me just yet that I'm basically migrating. Like, I don't know, it was kind of an overwhelming situation for me, but here I am now and I'm very much comfortable here in Canada. I love the people I've met already and I'm hoping that I could meet more new people. Now, some of the companies that I work with offered me to move to US, to LA, and then they want me to work full-time. But the thing is, I don't want to work full-time. 
I don't want to do that. So I declined and I'd rather stay here. A few more questions. What do you miss in the Philippines? Oh my God, I love this question because I have so many answers. Um, let's start with the beaches. Um, there are very nice beaches in there and I just couldn't find them here in Canada. I know some of you would probably recommend some places that are far away from here. Like uh, maybe there are nice beaches um, in Vancouver or somewhere else. But let me tell you, I've seen the photos and I've heard from other Filipinos who have been there too, that our Boracay, our Palawan, um, Shargao, everything else, they're unbeatable. So, the beaches in here, I'm glad you guys are happy about it. I'm glad you guys are contented with that. Of course, you gotta love your own, but you should visit my country. That's for sure. You should visit Philippines. And I have so many, so many, so many recommendations for you if you're going. I also did, uh, I also do miss the, the cheaper cost of living in the Philippines. Like, it's insane how everything in here costs so much. So much. And also at the same time, I think I should share that I miss how easy it is to process a business in the Philippines <laughs> because here it's so hard there's a lot of requirements and it takes so much time as well it takes so long just like for example you know um when you're opening a restaurant the permits for um liquor it's insane but in the Philippines it's faster it's easier so you can run your business right away but here you have to consider a lot of things. And for me, who always have some business ideas and I want to get them running as fast as I could, I've been in this learning process for so long already, yet I still feel like there's so much that I still need to learn. And it's driving me insane. The next question is, what is your number one wish list plan? Wait, that's not fair. I have like a number one wish list plan for each type. <laughs> like I have a number one Alocasia, I have a number one Hoya. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but okay, okay. If you're going to ask me for my number one of all of them. Hmm. <laughs> That's so hard. Uh huh. I think I would say my number one is a serpent, a variegated serpent. I don't care if it's the inner variegated or the outer margin. I want them both, obviously, but. Just to have one first, I would be so happy. So that's a wish list plant, I think. But I do have more, obviously. <laughs> and it's a crazy list, if you ask me. I'm sure those plants are quite expensive, but I'm gonna get them eventually. Next question is, plant that you regret the most. <laughs> Why do I feel like there's a lot of answers to this? <laughs> okay, let me think, let me think. Um, <laughs> huh. Okay, in general, I would say the plant that I regret the most <laughs> would be allocations. <laughs> it's mostly because um, I think when it comes to this 
very much hyped plants that's what i call them you have to be smart about it like we already know that the prices will go down eventually right so because of that i think it would be smart not to just jump into the trend just because everyone's buying this pink alocasia like crazy everyone's posting about their plant so you don't have to do it too just because you know um the prices will go down eventually and it's going to be smarter for you to just wait instead of like spending on it right away because by the end of the day when the prices have dropped oh, it will crush your heart i mean if you have so many extra money then be it good for you congratulations <laughs> But if you want to be smart about your money, and that's something that I really want to keep on doing, I just don't um, join the hype anymore. I, I once did before. And you guys know that already. I think it also adds to it that I just really have um, some bad experiences with a few allocations. Um, I did purchase some expensive quorms, like uh, quorms were 1,500 and they just melted just like that. Mm. So honestly, never again. That's also why I don't sell quorms on my end because I would feel bad if somebody bought it and it would just die on them but at the same time it's not fair for me because if you didn't buy that from me and if i kept it i know that i would be able to grow it <laughs> if you get what i mean <laughs> so yeah that's why i don't really offer quorms down to like the last four questions i'm seeing maybe a few more um why do you use self-watering plant Wait, why do you use self-watering pots, I think? <laughs> um, so the reason is obviously the convenience. Um, my family and I love traveling. And there are times that we go away for like weeks. And it's so much better to have your plants in self-watering so that you don't have to worry about watering them. If anything, I worry more about the temperature and the humidity drop or things like that. But I got some things sorted so that I won't have to worry about that. I have some things automated in here and some things I could control through my phone. But yeah, that's why I do have self watering pots. It's very convenient and I can go as... Um, up to two weeks of no watering with my plants even during the summer which I just learned this year to be honest because I started collecting plants summer last year but back then not all of my plants were in self-watering so I kind of like experimented before I decided to put almost everything in self-watering so I, sell, I say almost because I still have a very few plants that are not in self-watering, but they are trained to intake water um, at the bottom. So they're used to bottom watering. And I also think that makes a lot of difference. Plants that are used to bottom watering suffer less from rotting for some reason. Um, the next one is... Ooh, when is your birthday? <laughs> so for this year, my birthday is done. Um, is it spring here in May? Yeah, because in the Philippines, I would be a summer baby. That's why um, all of my birthdays, all of my birthdays each year, I'm at the beach. I'm at Boracay because there's this thing we call um, labor union. 
and it happens like the first week of May and my birthday is on May 4. Very easy to remember if you're a fan of Star Wars because it's Star Wars Day. I know a lot of people have like greeted me and they said that they can't forget my birthday just because of Star Wars. <laughs> it's funny and it's really cool for someone who's a fan of Star Wars. So you guys already know I'm a nerd in so many aspects. I'm a nerd. So it's just so cute that my birthday is Star Wars Day. <laughs> Another question is, what are your other small businesses? Um, I think I basically answered this already um, on the question that asked about what I do for work. But yeah, so mostly e-commerce. Um, aside from the prop studio, I have the Artelier, which are my arts and crafts. And then I also have Creator Collective, which is a merch for creators, to inspire creators. And then I also have Mom and Moon, which is a merch for mothers, inspiring merch for mothers. And then, um, what else do I have? And then a few drop shipping and print on demand stores that they're just around. We don't even need to talk about them. <laughs> Those are my other small businesses. I'm hoping that I could put up the businesses that I closed down in the Philippines here. So one of them is a, an advertising agency. Um, I do have the passion for like creative marketing and I would love to run my own agency again, but not sure that's going to happen. I have different priorities now. My career basically took a turn, a different turn, a different direction. So I don't know. I don't know about that. That, that would be so much fun, I think. Oh, we're almost done. We're almost done and I'm so happy. Um, where in the Philippines did you came from? Okay, so, oh yeah, I haven't mentioned, right? I just said that I'm from the city, but I'm basically from um, Quezon City, which is part of Metro Manila. And yeah, because of that, I'm very much used to the city scenario um as crazy as it sounds i'm used to the traffic i'm used to being close to the places where things happen like the concerts the basketball game um, this is my scene so i'm so used to it and i think that's why i kind of like did not appreciate um living in Niagara before. I think it's because of that. I can never imagine um, myself um, living in the countryside. I like the idea of a short vacation or like maybe having a cottage or something like that when you want some peace, maybe. But I really need the, the happenings accessible to me. Like the parties and stuff like that, even right now. Like the restaurants and like I said, the concerts and um, any events, to be honest. Like shows, I like going to different kind of shows, plant shows and um, crystal events. I just want to make sure that they're close, they're accessible to me. Because if not, I would go crazy. Okay, I think we're quite done here. Now I just have to clean up. I made so much mess. And I think that's also the last question. And I don't know if you guys are already following me on Instagram, but if you guys want to send in more questions, I think we can do this again next time. 
and just let me know or if you have any questions like you right now leave it under the comment section and i might do a random q a again um in the future i don't want to do it like in the next few weeks <laughs> right away but like yeah maybe in a few months and i'm just going to collect all of the random questions but if it's a plant related question i'm probably going to make a video out of it let's see it just depends like i don't know i i realize that i have a really weird schedule when it comes to my plant chores but it's because you guys already know i do a lot of things <laughs> to those who sent questions thank you so much and i'm sorry i didn't ask if i could show your handle but yeah i'm really grateful for those who did send their questions and for those who were interested to basically get to know me and i hope i could also get to know you more if you guys just talk to me <laughs> connect with me so make sure to follow me on instagram and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button in this video and i guess we're done thank you for being here Oh, by the way, I think I want to show you guys my biggest Hoyas. Um, they are the ones that I didn't chop just because I know I said I don't want to get my Hoyas this big. But just look at them. This is my Wilbur Graves China. It's so splashy. I remember I posted this mother plant that I want to have this for trade or like for sale if anyone's willing to buy. But a lot of you addressed that... I shouldn't get rid of it or if I do I can just keep a small specimen for myself because it's so splashy and it's so nice and you know what I did it I kept the entire thing and this is my Hoya pubicalyx silver pink ghost yeah I think <laughs> yeah I think so and just look at that it's so gorgeous I think it's really nice and I also wanted to get rid of this but yeah I changed my mind <laughs>